Thank you very much. Good afternoon. So um, at East London in 2024, we will mark 10 years of learning in terms of using quality improvement in everything we do. And I'm going to take you through the story of the quality improvement in analytics. So before we began this journey, this is what um, our analytics looks like. Now, you guys, analysts, you will know that it's very hard to tell a story. It's very hard to find trends from this style of data. But what you might notice in the bottom corners is there are some arrows there. You can see them. They sell, tell a trend, don't they? When the number moves a little bit up from one month to the next, we get the up arrow. When it moves a little bit down from one month to the next, we get the down arrow. And hey, do you know what? If it stays exactly the same, you might get an equal sign that nothing has changed. Now, getting that equal sign is pretty hard when you're doing safety incidents per 1,000 bed days to one decimal place. So you can imagine this team here, every month they were said things were getting bigger or they were getting worse or they were getting smaller and they were going down um, every single month. It was never staying the same. So this is our integrated analytical approach. We've got seven principles. Right at the heart of it is improvement methodology. So we produce thousands and thousands of SPC charts in our dashboard every single day. Why do we do this? Well, we do this because we want every single team every single ward, every single consultant, every single directorate level to be able to look and find stories in their data and recognize trends. Why do we use statistical process control? Well, we use statistical process control because unlike those up and down arrows, we want to rec people to recognize when change or variation is significant, when something is happening that's unusual that you might want to understand and support and continuously improve and when it's just part of everyday variation. So this is a very simple statistical process um, chart dashboard. We've got just three elements here. You can see there's admissions, there's discharges, there's length of stay. But the important thing to remember is when you're building charts for every single granularity, wards, for teams, for consultants, Every single chart has its own personal characteristics. It has its individual average line. It has its control limits, which are the boundaries between the normal and the unusual variation. And it has its own rule set that is applied to its very own data. So this particular example, you can see this is from Luton. You can see admissions significantly gone down, discharges significantly gone down, average length of stay significantly <coughs> gone up. Very simple very easy to interpret and to follow the trends for a simple dashboard. But here's the problem. So just imagine one indicator. So at East London, we've got a range of six directorates and about 40 odd wards. One single measure creates 50 individual charts. Now you guys know that there's, there's many more KPIs than that, isn't there? Hundreds of KPIs that report. So instantly you can see you are generating hundreds and hundreds of charts. But it's even more complicated than that. And here's a problem that you might not even envisage unless you're on the journey like us, is what happens if someone wants to not select just a single ward, a single team, or single directorate? What happens if they want to self-select? They want to select perhaps four or five wards that represent a particular specialty. Maybe they want to select four teams that are on a particular pathway to reduce waiting times. Or maybe they want to select every ward in the trust except one for a very good reason. And instantly you can see there, you are possibly looking at thousands or even hundreds of thousands of chart combinations. And that's where we are at East London. So we are generating 100,000 or more chart combinations every single day, allowing every granularity of the trust or multiple granularities or whatever question someone wants to ask to see their variance of their data. Now, how did we do that? So, we started off by employing an analyst. And they didn't last long. Very soon, as the organization wanted, had its appetite for looking at data in this way, they obviously became really swamped with the amount of demand they had. Even with the best tools, the best Excel tools, the best procedures, optimizing the way they work, it was too much for them. We tried routing it through the data warehouse as well. And overnight, while everyone was sleeping, although analysts don't tend to sleep, do they? Thinking about numbers all the time. But nevertheless, it was churning away and producing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of chart combinations. But even that, we couldn't keep up with. So what we did is, is we built a dynamic tool 
in a custom visual um, in Power BI, and it's called Easy SPC. Now, you don't all have to follow that, but if you want to go on the same journey as us, you will need to think about a dynamic, real-time way of monitoring your SPC charts. The amount of rows you need for a complicated hospital trust for all the different people wanting to digest the data, you're going to need a dynamic, real-time uh, uh, system that's going to monitor that. Here's a little story for you of the results of some of our, 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 our work. So we have, like a lot of you, we have electronic ward screens um, throughout the trusts where ward staff can have a look at um, task management um, that they have to provide for patients, checking that assessments and health checks and various routine tasks are up to date and done in a timely manner. With those Power BI task screens, we managed to, this is a wonderful story, managed to reduce time for overnight audits for some of our staff from, from four hours in City and Hackney to one hour. So again, three hours per night. What did they use for that time? Well, the best answer, the most powerful answer, the answer that we're all here for is they spent more time with patients. But of course, this is Hacker. There is another answer that they provided to us of what they used with that extra time. Well, they had extra time to analyze data. And what they did is they had a look at the dashboards, they had a look at the SPC charts and trends, and they noticed a really unusual story, a really unusual trend. The use of rapid tranquilization drugs was significantly down in this ward, but the violence was staying the same. A very unusual trend. They took that trend away to their away day. They had a discussion about how that pattern could possibly occur. What they found out is there was a change in policy and staff had become very fearful of using rapid tranquilization drugs. So they identified a training need and a review of the policy. So how did they do it? Well, it wasn't too hard for them. What they did is they lined up the two statistical process control charts. They looked at the top one, which was physical violence, and you could see it hasn't had much special cause variation, a couple of spikes. And they looked at the bottom one, the use of rapid tranquilization drugs, and they noticed a sharp decline. That's all the time it took them to find a story and then go and talk about the story and find the answer. We don't just use um, SPC um, in safety incidents. One of the areas that we've explored using it is flow. So what we do is we lay out statistical process control charts um, in order of a patient pathway. So we've got referrals, we've got assessments, we've got treatment, and then we've got discharges. And it allows all our service teams to review their different charts. This is a particular example where a team that felt they were really busy was shocked to find that their caseload had dropped. Yet their referrals was really, was really busy. So how can you have that? How can you have busy referrals, much more referrals, a caseload that's dropping? Didn't really make sense to them. Then they looked at their discharges rate and their assessment waiting times, and they found that the discharge rate had increased even further than the referral improvement, and the waiting times had stayed the same. So this actually was a conclusion of a team that actually was managing a much more faster flow of patients and managing to get patients through the system in a very efficient way. So that's the journey we've got to so far. Those are the hurdles we've jumped. And if you, you are going to follow this journey and produce a similar you know, wide-scale charts of hundreds of thousands of charts for everyone, bear in mind you will need some technical support. You can't just get it through business as usual analytical you know, willpower, which is often the case. But the next challenge is the one that we're on now. So we've got hundreds of thousands of charts produced every day, but how do you manage all these charts? So you will have individual wards, hopefully, you will have individual teams looking at their data, but what about the stories that perhaps people aren't looking at or the areas people aren't looking at? So what we're exploring now is, is a summary view, a table view, where what you might get is you might get hotspots highlighting where the special cause variation. So you can look through entire wards, entire teams, and have a look at the hotspots, and then drill down to that data and find those stories that people might not be able to tell. Now, for those of you that know statistical process control, you know that also these charts need to be managed, don't they? It's not enough just to produce the chart and let it run for enormous lengths of time. You have to manage them. You have to find out the stories. You might even have to shift the data to recognize when data is changing. And within that table view, 
again, we will, it's just, it's, you can see it's just a, just a proof of concept at the moment. If you can see those ward names, you'll notice it's a Sherlock Holmes theme. We were in America recently. They love Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> if you go there, that's a good one to, to use. Um, and hopefully what we, this system will allow is it will allow people to dynamically change the charts, but also comment back on what, the, what was the annotation of the charts when it's changes. So that's the journey on one now. You know, we've managed to get a system where we can produce hundreds of thousands of charts. Now we're trying to produce a system where they can be managed and adapted all the time. And again, it needs to be a system that's dynamic because if you're just doing it in your data warehouse overnight, once a day, when someone wants to make a live change to a chart recognizing a change, they'll want to see it instantly, won't they? They won't want to wait a day or a week for their chart to change. So that's, that's, the, that's the story. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. That was really good. So um, we have a couple of minutes now, so I'd like to invite any questions about how you can do this yourself. Uh, where, ooh, there we are. We've got 13 apps covering all different areas across the trust, and within each one of those apps, there will be a selection of, of, of SPC charts and dashboards for all the different areas. So that could be patient flow, patient safety, population health, finance, and staffing. So um, it's quite a, a portfolio. Of, that's, that's our aim, is really clinical and non-clinical data to let everyone visit their app and see all the things that are, all the trends that's affecting their, the pressures on their ward or team. Yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the last innovation that we're trying to work up now is to have a system where, you know, and this is, this is a journey run now where, where you can add an intervention into the charts, you can annotate it, and hopefully it will come up on the charts. So, yeah, still more hurdles to jump on that one, but that's where, that's where we're going next. <laughs>